Throughout the long history of human communication, people have always found ways to get their message across. Hello? Who's there? I'm talking. Hello? Even if the message is pure, simple disrespect. Put that cookie down! Now! Think about it. What's the quickest way to show someone how little you think of them? Hint, it's not a word, it's a gesture. That's right, we're talking about the middle finger. The middle finger has been known as a way to display anger for a very long time, going all the way back to ancient Greece. But how did it get started, and what does it actually mean? You know, besides the obvious. Today on Weird History, we're diving into the history of giving someone the finger. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel, and leave a comment to let us know what other ancient disses you would like to hear about. Okay, time to flex your flippin' finger. I should never have taught you that. Stop that. Giving someone the finger, also known as flipping the bird or flipping someone off, is a gesture dating all the way back to ancient Greece. Those Greeks really knew how to piss people off. In fact, it's one of the most ancient insult gestures known, according to anthropologist Desmond Morris. It's easy to understand why flipping the bird became a common way to quietly yet silently tell someone to jog on. There's something weirdly powerful about it, like you almost have to accompany it with an intimidating grunt. It also feels vaguely uncouth and indecent, possibly owing to the phallic nature of extending the middle finger while keeping the hand in a closed fist. It's the non-verbal equivalent of throwing a brick through someone's window. A well-timed flipping of the bird can make or break your entire afternoon. Did you just flip me off? No. Yes, you did. You just flipped me the bird. Depending on which side of the bird you were on. So, how did it start? Believe it or not, it had absolutely nothing to do with medieval archers, despite what you may have heard from a popular but apocryphal story about the gesture's origins. The widely circulated tale claims that in the 1415 Battle of Agincourt, the French plotted to cut off the middle fingers of their captured English soldiers. The reasoning behind this specific act of violence was that the soldiers would be permanently unable to draw their longbows, and thus forever out of a job. The story claims that after winning the battle, the English taunted the French by waving their middle fingers. Sort of like a, hey, look at what we still got. What a strange person. It's a cute little revenge story, right? Unfortunately, it's also just a bit of British propaganda, because none of it's true. There's no evidence that this occurrence took place at all. So if you hear someone talking about middle fingers and archers, feel free to gently correct them. Maybe with a gesture. To get into the real origins of the middle finger, we gotta go way back. Because when we say giving the middle finger is an old school insult, we mean really old school. Old as in ancient Greece, 2,500 years ago. Surprisingly, flipping the bird wasn't started by teenagers wanting a way to stick it to stuffy adults. One of the first recorded uses of the middle finger as an insult was by the Greek philosopher Diogenes, who threw up his middle finger to display his dislike of the orator Demosthenes. Those guys love to dunk on each other. The ancient Romans had an interesting relationship with the raised middle finger. On the one hand, they called it the digitus impudicus, or the offensive indecent finger. That's a pretty fancy name for a finger. They could have just called it Mitch. Showing the middle finger alone could be perceived as a threat on one's sensitive areas because of the phallic undertones of the gesture. With that in mind, Roman Emperor Caligula reportedly made senators kneel and kiss his middle finger, which clearly represented his phallus. However, Romans also used images of male genitalia to ward off evil. So in addition to the middle finger being used to really steam someone's clams and as a way to figuratively wave your unmentionables in the air, the gesture was also transformed into a method of keeping evil at bay. So that instinct to give ghosts the finger actually has historic significance. We can't do a deep dive into the history of the middle finger without mentioning the most famous middle finger of all, which is still being displayed over 300 years after the owner's death. This famous middle finger originally belonged to the one and only Galileo Galilei, scientist and astronomer extraordinaire, who also made a habit of sticking it to the uppity crowd with his wild theories about the solar system that led to the church sentencing him to house arrest at the end of his life. In 1737, almost a century after Galileo's death, some very loyal followers removed three of his fingers, along with a tooth and vertebra, as Galileo's body was being transported to a tomb. 
That's how you know when you've really inspired people, when they intercept your skeleton to steal a bunch of your bones. The middle finger was kept in a container with a thumb and tooth. It was passed down for generations within the same family. However, that family lost the container in the 1900s, only to have it reemerge at an auction in 2009, which officially makes it the creepiest auction ever. The finger is now displayed at the Galileo Museum in Florence, Italy, in case you want to go get flipped off by one of the greatest minds in history. In what should come as no big surprise to anyone who has ever watched televised sports, a crotchety old-timey baseball player was the first person to be photographed while shooting someone the bird. Charles Old Hoss Radborn was the pitcher for the Boston Bean Eaters, exemplifying the grand tradition of every player and team in Major League Baseball having names that are perpetually 100 years out of date. Old Hoss Radborn was a great pitcher who wound up in the Baseball Hall of Fame. But he was also legendary for his cranky disposition, famous for always having an attitude. Case in point, on opening day in 1886, Radborn lined up with his teammates to take a group photo. While resting his hand on his teammate's shoulder, Radborn raised his middle finger at the last second. Who he was giving the bird to is up for interpretation. The photographer, the New York Giants, the team they were playing that day, the fans, the sport of baseball, everyone, like the secret of Mona Lisa's smile. It remains a mystery. Here's an unusual bit of British trivia. Folks from the UK have been hooting like owls and hissing like geese as a form of insult for seven centuries. One simply wonders why, but we'll leave that for another video. But with that tidbit in mind, it makes sense that the moniker The Bird would be applied to one of the most widespread gestures of ill will. To flip the bird officially became slang in the 1960s in Britain, making the phrase one of the chief cultural exports of the United Kingdom, alongside Earl Grey tea and smallpox. Johnny Cash has always been known as a man of the people, a classic country rebel who transcended genres and cultural groups. So it should come to no surprise that one of the most famous images of someone throwing up the middle finger is Cash holding his upraised digit inches from the camera, snarling and clutching his guitar. So what could have possibly happened that pissed him off right before the picture was taken? Well, he was performing at the San Quentin prison in California. Cash had a soft spot for those who struggled in their lives, and he made it a point to sympathize with their plight in his songs and by performing for them live. So when Cash was asked to take a photo for the prison's warden, he didn't hold his feelings back. And lo and behold, a piece of American culture was captured on February 24, 1969. The most famous bird flip in American politics arguably came from Nelson Rockefeller, Gerald Ford's vice president. Because yes, even politicians indulged in some silent disrespect. Hard to believe, they're usually so loud with their disrespect. Rockefeller was at Binghamton University in New York for a campaign event when he started to get heckled by some leftist students. This enraged him, so he put that historic middle finger gesture to good use. Unfortunately for the vice president, a camera snapped a shot at the moment he lost his temper. In 1976, that kind of thing was quite scandalous, and the incident even inspired the gesture to be called the Rockefeller Salute. As a funny footnote to the event, Senator Bob Dole was there that day and found Rockefeller's salute quite hilarious. When a reporter later asked him why he hadn't joined in, Dole replied, I have trouble with my right arm. As old and ubiquitous as the middle finger is, you'd think it was always a well-known gesture. But that's not exactly the case. In the Middle Ages, the gesture fell out of favor, likely due to the Catholic Church, which did not like its implied sexual nature. And while the gesture picked up steam in different areas of the world over the past few centuries, it still wasn't universal. For instance, in 1968, the USS Pueblo was captured by North Korea. During the American crew's months-long detainment, their North Korean captors would release photos of the sailors to show how well they were being treated. However, eagle-eyed American observers could easily spot that the captured crew was subtly flipping the bird to the camera in nearly every photograph. When the North Korean captors asked what the symbol was, the sailors claimed it was the Hawaiian gesture for good luck. Not saying that photobomb wasn't worth it, but it's probably a good thing the North Koreans didn't look too much further into that.
Even though flipping the bird may seem pretty unmistakable in its intent, not every offensive gesture is obvious. It's a way of giving the finger without actually having to give it. For instance, in some areas of the world, a thumbs up could earn you a righteous ass kicking. That's right. While it may be the universal sign of everything's A-OK -okay in the US, flashing someone a thumbs up in countries like Afghanistan, Iran, and Iraq is basically saying, I hate everything about you. This can create some sticky situations for American travelers who are just trying to throw out some positive energy. So if you're an active traveler, it's probably best to keep the hand gestures at a minimum. Unless someone really cheeses you off. Uh, and most of all, f you, Marnie. So what do you think? Which bird flapping fact did you find the most surprising? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our weird history.